Thank you for tuning in to the newest episode of the Plain Bible Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Soker. This episode is being released on September 7th, 2023. And this week I'm joined by Christopher Gardana, and we're talking about a law in Mexico that would allow people to renew their marriage every few years. Even if they did not renew their marriage, then they would be considered divorced. And there may be a lot of people who would prefer this as it would be an easy way to get out of marriage rather than go through some messy divorce. And since many people now consider marriage to be temporary anyway, this would seem to make a lot of sense from a worldly perspective. However, it does not reflect the wisdom of God or the teachings of his word. So we're going to talk about this for a little bit in our episode today. For links to the story we're talking about and other related materials, check out the show notes for this episode at plainbibleteaching.com slash podcast slash 090723. And now for our story this week. Mexico approves a two-year renewable temporary marriage law. From the Mazatlan Post, the law would be implemented in Aguas Calientes, Mexico, where a legislative initiative presented by the deputy Nazieli Rodriguez Calzada is approved, who proposed the creation of a civil union agreement of cohabitation. Is that a figure equivalent to a marriage with definite time or a temporary marriage? Those who decide to take this opinion as an alternative may sign a contract of minimum two years and maximum five. The legislator affirmed the contracting parties may restrain the contract, otherwise it will be taken as a de facto divorce. Before the controversy of the proposal, Rodriguez had indicated that it is not intended to replace conventional marriage, but is an alternative to common marriage and does not come to replace it, it is an option that people will have. So I have Christopher Gardana here with me on the podcast once again to help sort all of this out. It's Christopher, it's been a while, but it's good to have you back here on the show. I don't, I don't know if I can sort this out, but we'll we'll uh, look at what the Bible says about it. Yeah, we we can definitely do that, and and this is a, uh, I don't know, a little bit of an interesting story, and I wondered if maybe this was written in Spanish and then translated into English because some of the grammar was a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. was a little bit difficult. That's why I was kind of reading it, rushed through it a little bit, but um, but anyway. We get the idea that this is kind of a uh, this idea of a temporary marriage law that they said is you know not to replace conventional marriage, but as an alternative to it that would basically make it a lot easier for people to, if they're not thinking they're going to stay together, just kind of get out of that marriage without a messy divorce and all that. So you can see from a worldly perspective how this could appeal to a lot of people. So I want to, before we really start talking about, you know, this law in particular, I wanted to kind of lay a foundation that when we look at, as you said, we're going to look at what the Bible says from a biblical perspective, what is marriage or what does the Bible teach us about what marriage is? Well, in Genesis chapter two, uh, it's kind of an interesting thing. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 21, it says, So the Lord God caused a a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. And then he took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh in its place, and the Lord fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from man and brought her to the man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And I guess the key part for our, our study is, it says, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And uh, one interesting lesson I heard uh, many years ago that really made my mind remember this is that notice there we're speaking about the first man and the first woman, and yet it says they shall leave their father and mother and be joined together and they shall become one flesh. So they didn't have a, a earthly, a fleshly father and mother, and yet this principle was laid down at the very beginning in concerning marriage and relationships and you know reproduction and all those kinds of things this says for this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh and you know this was a a problem uh, this this idea of not staying together has been a problem since the very beginning time of people wanting to do things or change god's plan for marriage uh you know in uh matthew chapter 19 
in Jesus' day, uh, it was common for Jewish men to divorce their wives. And the Pharisees asked Jesus about this in Matthew 19. And his answer was in Matthew 19, verse four through six, have you not read he who made them at the beginning, made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. So here you have the first of the four gospels here where Jesus again is reaffirming this, this pattern uh, of marriage. And so it's, it's pretty clear what the Bible teaches about God's desire for marriage in that respect. Yeah. And uh, one thing I was thinking of when you were, were talking about that is that, you know, with this law that we're, we're talking about a temporary, you know, marriage law that would avoid the need for divorce, but a lot of people, when they think about marriage, they automatically think about divorce. And when the Pharisees, you mentioned that passage in Matthew 19, they wanted to ask a question about, well, is it lawful or, you know, is, you know can a man put away his, his wife? What Jesus did would immediately take them back to the law about marriage and what God, what God made for marriage. And as you said, that, that, you know, they, that started with Adam and Eve before, you know, they didn't have father or mother to leave and, you know, and then cleave to one another that, that but that was the pattern yeah. that was going to or that was to be followed for all mankind everyone who descended from them so the the emphasis there is on marriage god's design for marriage the permanency of marriage that this is this is a plan where two two people a man and a woman they come together and god joins them together in marriage and that is intended to be for life so so i think sure. that you we think about marriage is you have a man and a woman, God joins them together. And that is intended to be a lifelong relationship. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a, uh, it's pat one man, one woman for life. And of course, those who decide to disobey that pattern are disobeying God. They're violating God's will on that. Um, you know, even more recently in 2015, uh, the law allowing for, other types of marriages, like with a man and a man or a woman and a woman, homosexual marriage, uh, that doesn't follow the pattern in Genesis or what Jesus reaffirmed there in Matthew. Right. And uh, and I think that that gets to kind of the next thing that I wanted to to bring up here is that when you have civil laws that change, like like you mentioned, the uh, the law that allowed for same sex marriage and then this law that talks about, well, you can have marriage, but it's only temporary. Right. Those laws don't change what God said regarding marriage. God's law is still the same. And so, right. so laws can be put in, fe in effect that say, well, one man can marry you know, another man or one man can marry four women or, or whatever it might be, or mm -hmm. you know, a you know, woman can marry her cat or, or you know, right. anything. And, and you know, we've, you know, I've seen stories about, you know, people who are wanting to do this, like the someone wants to marry their pet or marry themselves right. or didn't, uh, uh, yeah didn't Robin Rodman marry himself you know so, yeah so I was thinking like that, that like I heard somewhere that for, someone had done that yeah, yeah yeah but when you when you have you know people who have such a you know, an idea of marriage that completely takes God out of it and they think well then we can make it anything we want well right. if you take God out of marriage then then there's really you can make anything that that you want to make. But the problem with that is that God created marriage. As you mentioned in Genesis 2, he was the one who made it in the beginning. So he makes the rules for it. Sure. And, you know, civil laws might change, but it doesn't change what God put in place for right. marriage. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one thing I hadn't caught until you reread it again for tonight uh, was this. Uh, they basically said that if, unless they renew it, it will be a de facto divorce. So mm -hmm. while this really this article or this subject is about marriage. It's also, even though it's called a temporary marriage, it's actually a de facto divorce after five years. Yeah. So, you know, you have to ask yourself, okay, well, how, how many different ways will you slice it? And would other Christians even be okay with that? You know, um, you know, they shouldn't have any impact upon God's will because obviously man's laws change every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't even right. keep the ones that they choose to keep. I mean, you know, we have, uh, elected officials who are, are against something one day and then they have a change of heart and then they're for something. And, you know, they're just as wishy-washy uh, as the day is long. And so, you know, God's 
God's law does not change. And you even see in the New Testament where an example of uh, Herod and John the Baptist in Mark chapter 6, where uh, John the Baptist said to Herod in Mark 6 and verse 17 and 18, uh, it says, For Herod himself had sent and had John arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Uh, and so even though Herod had married her, uh, as far as John was concerned, as far as God was concerned, uh, she was still his brother's wife. And so he didn't have the right just to take his brother's wife and say, well, you're going to be my wife now. And uh, and that's kind of what this law could do in, in a material sense where you could have a whole family. And let's say they had all said, hey, I think we're going to go for that five year marriage. And then what, what's to keep them from in five years all saying, you know, uh, I've been looking at my sister-in-law and she's been looking at me and, you know, and then they just do a, a swap, you know, and then we'll, we'll try out the other partner for five years and see if that works out. And maybe we'll make it permanent. Maybe we'll let it de facto divorce after five years. You know, yeah, it's, it, it's just it's bizarre. It seems, it seems a little bit outlandish, but when you read this and you see the direction society is going, it's really not far fetched that something like that could happen. Right. And so then if a Christian thinks, well, as long as the law says it's OK, then it's OK for me. Uh, I just, you know, say this renewable marriage was implemented here, you know, mm -hmm. would would churches and maybe even so-called, you know, members of the church, uh, would they say, well, the law says it's OK. And so we're going to accept them as, as a member and we're not going to deny them uh, fellowship because, you know, the law says this. Right. right. And it's only since uh, I had to look it up, but it was 1969 when mm -hmm. Governor Ronald Reagan in California signed into law the first no fault divorce. You know, before that, you had to have a real reason. Now, I haven't really dug into it deep to give you a deep discussion about it tonight. But, you know, the idea is even before 1969, it was very hard to get a divorce. And so even the law back then recognized the, the permanence of marriage. And it's only since 1969 that it doesn't really matter. You can just do it for whatever. And, you know, so goes Rome, so goes the church. You know, you see the church adopting some of these behaviors and these attitudes towards marriage, which are not biblical. Right. Yeah. And that, and what you said there about, you know, the, the church is just following after you know, the world and following after what society does. And and you think about the state that our society is in now with with these no fault divorces just being just common and, and people just think it's like it's always been that way. It hasn't always been that way. That it used to be more difficult to get out of a marriage. And now really you don't need to have a reason at all. And with a law like this, you know, you don't even need to have really any you don't need to file anything. You just just let right. it expire, and then let that's it all. Expire like a fishing license, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's kind of kind of what it turns into. Then yeah. is, and and I think that really get you know something like this. You know, whether this would ever happen here or not, I don't know. But something like this really should remind us that you know, as Christians, and you mentioned like in a church and, you know, how are we going to accept this and, and, or how are we going to deal with this? And if you have someone come in, like, you know, who's on one of these marriages or gotten out of these, one of these marriages or whatever it is that, you know, as, as congregations, as Christians, we need to make sure that we remember what God's law is on marriage, that, you know, you have a law that right. is put in place that allows a marriage to expire. Well, if God bound them together, they're still bound together right and so if they go off and say well this marriage expired and we're going to go you know marry someone else right and that would still be an adulterous marriage god because, hates divorce right god hates divorce and when he binds them together jesus says that you marry someone else you commit adultery and it's like well but the marriage expired no the marriage doesn't expire at least for god the marriage bond is still there so we need to make sure that that as our society continues to you know move further away from godly principles i know this is not a law in this country but you know there's always the possibility there especially with the direction society goes we need to make sure we understand what the bible teaches about marriage and how that affects us as christians and local congregations because right. we're going to have people that we're going to you know deal with as members of the church who are caught up in Maybe not this specific thing, but caught up in things like this and right. we'll have to deal with it. 
Right. Well, you know, Matthew 19, if you stay in that same section there in verse nine, Jesus says, and I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. We have many congregations who have disregarded this passage or made it into something that is not and basically have given a free pass to people to be in any type of marriage. Uh, they go to uh, books like First Corinthians chapter 7, where it says, you know, lest, uh, lest you burn with passion, every man should have a wife and every wife a husband. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 they point to that and say, well, you know, anything that's forbidding marriage is, is evil and is of the devil. And so every man has a right to a wife. Every woman has a, a right to a husband. And so if you're, you're denying them a relationship, then you're, you're wrong. I'm not I'm not denying them anything. In fact, God isn't denying them anything. They've all been given a, a right to one marriage. Mm -hmm. If they choose to violate that, that doesn't mean they just get to be like this, this five year, you know, de facto divorce or even just go to court. You know, right. uh, it kind of gets rid of all these questions about uh, running to the courthouse. You know, I've had brethren worry about, well, what if the guilty party runs to the courthouse and puts the other away? And, you know, I've had brethren mired in debate over all of those little nuances and what ifs and this and that and the other. And when it really boils down to it, God hates divorce. Mm -hmm. And right. the only exception he's given is in that Matthew 19, verse nine, you know, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. And yeah. whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. It's not any more difficult than that but people because of their desires they come to they try to redefine terms that uh you know i've heard examples where they're saying well jesus was just uh uh describing the law of moses because he lived under the law of moses and therefore he wouldn't have saying, been saying anything to to go against the law of moses and yet where did jesus go to when he was trying to lay down the pattern did he go to the moses and his giving them a writing of divorce no he says have you not read he who made them from the beginning made them male and female and for right. this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh and so they're no longer two but one flesh therefore what god has joined together let not man separate right and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about there at the beginning is that you know that pattern with adam and eve that was for everyone, for all mankind. It didn't matter what, you know, if they were living under the law of Moses or the gospel of Christ. It didn't matter if they were living in Israel or the United States or or wherever. Like that was the law for all of them. And and that was this came way before the law. This is right. I mean, this, you know. Yeah. And when you think about that exception that Jesus gave, you know, except for sexual immorality, even that's just a permission. It's not even a requirement that you can, right. you know, right. if, if there is, you know, adultery then a couple can work through that. There can be forgiveness right. and reconciliation. So even, even then, there's it's still not saying, well, okay, now that this happened, you have to divorce. It's it's a permission. But you know, the the emphasis here is on the permanency of marriage, that when God joins them together, sure, that's intended to be for life. There's one exception, and that's you know, that's the only exception. And right. and aside from that, God intends it to be for life. Right. Yeah. Well, so one one last thing I might consider yeah. then is um, I would have I would love to ask my brethren who have accepted lots of people who are in adulterous marriages, would they accept this? And if they say no, why not? Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, and and it's one that I don't know how they would answer it because you would think to be consistent if they're going to because it basically the what the position becomes is whatever can be legally recognized, then we have to accept that. And they haven't gone that far with same-sex marriage, but they do it with with almost any other kind of, of mm -hmm. marriage. Say, right. well, as long as it's legally accepted, the, the state says, well, these people are married, so we're going to accept these people as being married right now. Well, what if this happened? What if the state no, said, gonna... they, they're married for five years and then that's it? Then, right. then we're not going to scrutinize their marriage at all because we're just going to turn a blind eye and right. not worry about any of those relationships because we just want them to come to church. And and I believe the desire is a good thing of wanting people to worship God and be faithful to God, but they also need to recognize God's will concerning marriage and that it's not negotiable. It's not right. it's not something I'm negotiating. 
And certainly I'm not going to go to the Lord and say, well, in Mexico, they said, all I had to do was get married for five years. And if I didn't renew it, then I, I was a free man. Right. <laughs> and, and, and California, man, I don't even have to have an excuse. I just go down there with my lawyer who files the right paperwork. Uh, I heard a lady the other day on, on a podcast, basically, and she was, they were quoting her in a bad way. Uh, that she was saying that uh, marriage is just a piece of paper and, you know, all it takes is a lawyer and he can file the right paperwork and then it can be undone and there's nothing sanctified about marriage. And yet that's not what Jesus said. And that's right. not what the Lord said. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot to think about there and a lot to, you know, consider as far as the state that our culture is in and the things that really affect the church because of that. Sure. But as we wrap all this up, I, I as we think about marriage and what marriage is, we understand the Bible teaches that marriage is from God and it's a blessing from God, but it's a relationship that he designed to not last five years and then we just it just dissolves. It's a relationship that lasts a lifetime. And civil laws don't change that. Culture doesn't change that. So rather than, well, we need to figure out a way to get out of this marriage, we need to be looking to, if we're married or if we're looking to get married, Learn how to be the best husband or for women who may be listening or watching this, the best wife you can be and work on that relationship, build that relationship rather than thinking, as the world says, well, this is just temporary because God did not intend for it to be temporary. Anything else you want to add before we close for, for today? I think we should explore this a little bit more because when you look at what Jesus said in uh, other verses and then even what Paul speaks about as far as the you know, the church mm -hmm. in Christ and, you know, the, the bride of Christ and all of those kinds of things, those things are permanent. Mm -hmm. And our earthly marriages are supposed to reflect that same kind of bond as well. It's not meant to be temporary. God's, uh, you know, connection to the church and his people is, is permanent. It's not temporary. And so why should we change it? Yeah. You know, yeah, that's a good point. And that, that's that our marriages are to reflect that relationship. And, and as you said, it's not temporary and, and our marriages shouldn't be temporary either. So that, that's a good point. That's that's yeah. And, and that's would be some something else we can talk about and and explore further. But but yeah, as we think about as we think about this and the law, the laws of man are always changing. The will of man is always changing. But God's law always remains the same. And we need to remember that whether it's marriage or anything else, God's law doesn't change. So Christopher, thanks for joining me and, and talking about this and hope, hopefully, you know, this discussion will help some people who, you know, might not understand these things, but help clear things up a little bit for them. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you. That's all for this week. Thank you for listening to the Plain Bible Teaching Podcast. I hope you found this to be interesting, informative, and helpful. For links to the story we talked about, as well as other related materials, visit the show notes for this episode at plainbibleteaching.com slash podcast slash 090723. If you have a moment to rate and review the podcast or to share it with others, that's always appreciated. And if you're listening to this, remember that we are also uploading video versions of the podcast to the Plain Bible Teaching YouTube channel. So if you want to watch these on video, then that option is there for you. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can see other videos that are posted here from time to time. And if you see a new story or have some topic that you think would make for a good discussion, send that to me at andy at plainbibleteaching.com. Thanks again for listening, and I hope to talk to you again next week.